I mean, listen, people, it's not my fault, right, that my life circumstances aligned perfectly with the zeitgeist, right? My parents have always been ahead of the curve. They're New Yorkers, right? Meanwhile, we have the high representatives from flyover country who actually aren't getting high. That's the problem. Running the show, right? I mean, we have that fucking wheelchair motherfucker Abbott who sued his neighbors when a bolt of lightning, an act of God, felled a tree that then fell on him. He sued his neighbor and the company for money and is taking migrants, people we used to call immigrants, and shipping them elsewhere, right? Which bears a resemblance to the foundational violence that's built into liberal democracy, representative democracy. Read my dissertation linked below, people. I wrote it as accessibly as possible. And turns out a lot of people have been reading it and circulating it just like I asked. Right? I'm a brilliant teacher, so good that I was pushed out of higher education because I had my network moment. I was like, I can't take it anymore. I've had it up to here with the bullshit, literally, right? I was like, there's not enough murd in the world. for me to see the upside of this shit. Do you know what I mean? I was like, because sometimes shit means good luck, right? Merd, M-E-R-D-E, that's a French word. A lot of you can't read out there. I see this in my comments right here on YouTube, right? Case in point, I recently posted a video of Rihanna talking about how people mispronounce her name, but it's okay, right? A white gay guy like me, what's his face from what's his face, was talking to her about it. And she's like, yeah, people say Rihanna or they say Rihanna. I quoted that as a video. I clipped it, in other words. I clipped it, put it in front. And then I reacted to it, right? It's called a reaction. Did everybody hear Beyonce's album? By the way, genius. I know. I was trained by Ingrid Sishi at Interview Magazine, who also edited Vanity Fair with her lover, Sandra Brandt. And before that, Ingrid was the editor of Art Forum Magazine and a photography critic. For the New Yorker, right? David Remnick ain't shit. Ronan Farrow ain't shit, people. Healing is not fetishistically attaching yourself to the open wound. That shit's got to heal, people. Let's talk about Mia Farrow, right? Publicly questioning the parentage of Ronan on the one hand while not letting her daughter let go of what apparently was a very traumatizing prank her mother played on her, right? Kirby Dick doesn't know his Derrida from Foucault, and a lot of people will make fun of me for that, but to that, I say fuck you because this is my performance, people, and I'm bringing it to Broadway. It's been a big hit out here in Hollywood where I've been tutoring, not just at Harvard Westlake, but also Harkham Hillel, that's a Zionist institution, but I wasn't contracted by the school. I was contracted by the family who I love very much, right? Not all Israelis support what's going on in their country. We see that on the news if you pay attention. 
right? But we're too busy paying attention about everything else, right? Especially people who lack melanin, like me, right? Where is the problem? The problem is us. Thank you, Taylor, for acknowledging that, girl. You know, look at Taylor Swift. All she does is try to make people happy. And as you may see on my new YouTube series, The Armenian Quarter, I'm roasting the world right now because everybody is so stupid. Right? I didn't spend 10 years in school, people. Count them. 10 years. This is my material. It's killing out here in Hollywood, right? I'm doing it so I don't kill myself. Right? I'm too sensitive for the world. And everybody said, you know what, Sean? Grow the fuck up. And it turns out I did grow up. I had not one, not two, but three open ulcerated wounds on my body this time last year including one in my scrotum. That's your ball sack, people, if you didn't know. I don't know, did you guys get a sex ed in school? Because I did. I did miss out on breast and testicle day. Uh, and I'm glad, actually. It karmically saved me, I guess, because I probably would have been made fun of for being gay, even though I didn't identify as gay, because gay to me was so horribly stigmatized, right? That um, people just allowed gay people to die by the dozens, right? Cheaper by the dozen, right? That's a problem with a world in which people are treated like property legally, right? Whipped, bound, right? I mean, gosh, people. I was sucking dick at Thomas Jefferson's goddamn university, the University of Virginia in Cabell Hall on the third or fourth floor. We all were doing it. Like, guys are pigs. That's the point. Just look at them. And I do identify as a guy, right? But I can also identify as trans if I want. Because here's the thing about trans people. It doesn't just mean transgender right? And this is, by the way, a fair critique of the transgender movement. I've never understood why. This is where I'm sympathetic, right, to Dave Chappelle's point of view here, not having even really heard it. Because I, like young people, I'm interested to see where the culture is going, right? And as everybody knows, no disrespect to Dave, his audience is not young people, right? His audience are people who are around his age, and I'm around his age, a little bit younger, right? But I don't care what he thinks, right? I want to know what, you know, my buddies at the improv think, right? That's why I was a teacher. I wanted to know what the young people of today thought. I've always wanted to know what the young people, when I was a young person, I used to work at a paper called Young DC in Washington DC, right? This is not my first time at the rodeo and thank you, Beyonce, for just such a genius album. The fuck that dude in the Washington Post, did you read that review? Universally acclaimed, genius work. This is why I also had to leave the media, right? Because I was so sick of these counterintuitive takes. This motherfucker is saying that the album is a words bait, that it doesn't make any sense. Even though he says her singing has never been better, her create. I was like, is this a prank? I mean, is, is, is Jeff Bezos that Bozo are deliberately doing? Is he telling? I don't get it. Right then I'm reading an article in the LA Times today about how older people are getting around and it starts with an article, of, it starts with an example of a woman on the bus. So we're led to believe that she's indigent, right? Because she doesn't have a car. Even though plenty of people don't have cars in LA, it's so much more civilized to travel by bus. I'd rather, by the way, travel on a bus with an unhoused person than travel in a fucking car with most housed people. <laughs> To be perfectly honest, I'll take the smell, right? But at least they leave you alone, right? I almost stepped over one coming over here tonight, back to my apartment here in Glendale. I was like, it's hard to tell sometimes. I was like, is that an abandoned mattress or is somebody sleeping 
underneath it. Do you know what I mean? Like, and I am trained in overdose prevention, people. I lived in New York City for 20 years. At a certain point, you realize I'm either going to be part of the problem or I'm going to be part of the solution. And yes, the final solution is axiomatically, as Eve Sedgwick, the late great Eve Sedgwick might put it. I am writing a piece for New York Magazine about this, where I used to work. Um, axiomatically, the final solution is being worked out again, right? Because Gaza has been destroyed. So that destroys the possibility of a two-state solution, right? Because Israel can't possibly integrate with Palestine because then the Jewish people, God forbid, would be outnumbered, right? In the same way, <gasps> right? Thank you, Annette Gordon-Reed, right? I'm like losing my mind over this Ava DuVernay fucking what's-your-face Wilkerson alliance. I'm like, how the fuck does Ava DuVernay make Queen Sugar, which is about the afterlives of slavery in this country, then endorse the most sick counterintuitive take possible that racism is actually a matter of caste. When caste does not involve owning other people. I was like, I, I, did I really, I'm so glad I walked out of that movie. I was like, this is insanity. And so I finally started reading the Hemingses of Monticello and Annette Gordon-Reed so clearly lays out. Once again, how many times do we have to go over this? Read my own work. Race was invented by English-speaking white people to rationalize their ownership and therefore constitutive abuse of black people from Africa, the African continent, okay? Race is a modern invention that is a total fucking fiction, but nevertheless has had disastrous monstrous consequences, right? I know Thomas Jefferson inside out. He was a fucking monster, okay? So you can roast me all you want, motherfuckers. Come at me. Yeah, so what? I suck dick at UVA in Cabell Hall. It's called a glory hole, motherfuckers. Some of us like that shit. It turns us on. I'd rather do that than talk to most of you all out there. What am I supposed to do? Read the news? <laughs> right? What am I supposed to do? Read the stunning hypocrisy every single day? Right? Biden telling us he's a God-fearing man because he goes to mass? Fuck that dude. So what? Most people who go to mass are hypocrites. Right? I learned that from the jump. It's why I always was so sad when I left there because I felt like everybody was so sad to be there because they would be listening to these priests going on and on and on about whatever the fuck. And I was like, you know, it's a beautiful day outside. I mean, I could be playing tennis right now. You know, and I don't have to be inside listening to these old men, you know. And no, this is not the trauma talking. I was not abused by priests. My parents were in very good terms. My brother was an altar boy. My parents were in very good terms with priests. This is a preview of my, I'm going to do a show called Office Hours or the Armenian Quarter. I mean, this is just a trial run for Broadway people. I mean, I've been made. Everybody knows that. I mean, for all I know, Hamas moved on, you know, October 7th because I was being recruited for a comp lit job at Harvard, right? But how could the Netanyahu's, how could Samantha Power have survived me being appointed to a tenure track position at Harvard, right? This is what I'm saying. The center cannot hold. I mean, this is just, this is all going to end horribly, right? Because nobody can read anything anymore, right? Biden hogtied on the back of a pickup truck is called American art, my friends. Go to a fucking museum, right? And now they're talking about this inciting political violence. Well, Biden and company are financing the biggest 
most explicit case of genocide ever, and nobody is accurately covering it in the mainstream media, right? What the fuck is Philip Gravich's work worth at this point? Do you know what I mean? I just, I don't understand how did we go this wrong as a society, right? I mean, is this what all the prepping did? You know, I was like reading all these people prepping before the pandemic and I mean, before the pandemic got real, right? I was like, why are the people with the most, or people keep saying this in songs, right? I know I'm quoting a song here or paraphrasing, right? Why do the people with the most keep on taking the most, right? Why can't they just be good with what they already have, right? The simpler, the better. People see how I live so simply. That's why people are generous with me. You know, I actually am really humble, but I am really also deeply sad. I mean, I am Generation X, but I'm the last of my generation. Pour one out for Elizabeth Wurzel. Pour one out for Winona Ryder. She's still here, but still pour one out. Girl's been through it. I've seen it, people. She shoplifted for attention. And I did crystal meth for attention during the Trump administration. And as I was saying to my brother yesterday, you know, my stupid ass boyfriend, God love him, like didn't even know he was doing crystal meth. Meanwhile, I would be gone for 24 hours and be coming home you know, schwitzing like a pig after having sex like a pig for, you know, 24 hours. And he would not know, like, I mean, I guess he just was so deeply hurt already, right? Because he was so traumatized, right? That's the whole thing. We're all just reenacting our trauma, right? What is the Bible like such a catalog of trauma and vengeance, right? Stop the cycle. Stop the insanity. Think what would... Susan Powder do. Subscribe the Armenian Quarter. Whatever next this is. Next. We're just going to do it. No stopping now, people. Just keep moving. that. Whatever those chops are. Okay? Chop, chop. <laughs>